Welcome back uh, to the lecture series on uh, metrology. Now uh, let us start uh, lecture number uh, 6 under uh, module number uh, 12. In this lecture uh, the following uh, topics uh, will be covered. Uh, stage uh, errors, calibration of uh, stages, typical specifications of uh, the micro stages and nano stages and applications and selection of uh, the different kinds of stages and finally we will uh, discuss about nano technology instrumentation in the previous uh, lecture we discussed about uh, different uh, types of uh, stages uh, linear uh, stages rotary stages and what are the different kinds kinds of uh, drives used in the stages uh, like uh, uh, now we will uh, understand what are the various uh, errors uh, that uh, occur in uh, the metrology stages. Now you can uh, see here uh, we have uh, linear uh, errors and uh, angular uh, errors. So this picture shows that the table, this is the table uh, uh, surface and the table is uh, moving in the x uh, direction. Uh, when it moves, the, it uh, uh, may move like this, that means it will move up and down, the table surface will move up and down, that is known as the uh, flatness uh, error. Similarly, when it moves, uh, it may move like this, in the horizontal, uh, in the vertical plane, uh, it may move uh, like this. So this is uh, straightness uh, error. These uh, errors, linear errors occur uh, in all the three axes in uh, uh, x-axis movement, in uh, y-axis movement as well as in uh, z-axis uh, movement and uh, coming to the angular uh, errors in each axis we can, uh, there can be uh, uh, error in the yaw axis that means the table is uh, rotating in this uh, fashion. So this is the uh, yeah axis. Similarly, the along the pitch axis it may tilt, the table surface may tilt and uh, along uh, this x axis it may roll, table surface uh, may roll. That is apart from uh, linear errors in x, y, z direction, uh, there can be roll uh, axis error, yaw axis error and pitch axis uh, error. That means while uh, uh, designing and uh, manufacturing uh, these uh, micro nano stages, a lot of care has to be taken so that it is uh, properly uh, designed. Also in the manufacturing, a proper care should be taken uh, so that uh, these uh, errors are uh, minimized. Now, uh, these uh, graphs uh, show the repeatability. You can see here this is the uh, position of the stage and the uh, y-axis shows uh, the deviation uh, in millimeter. Now, uh, uh, after uh, assembling uh, the stage, uh, we have to conduct uh, um, uh, performance uh, tests many times and then repeatability should be established. You can see here the uh, error at each position, the table is uh, moved along uh, the different axis, x axis, y axis and z axis and what is the uh, amount of uh, error at different uh, uh, positions, for example at 25 millimeter position, what is the amount of error, so multiple readings are taken and then finally we can calculate uh, the average uh, values, that means this uh, a line shows the mean error in uh, the forward uh, direction. Uh, similarly, in uh, uh, reverse direction also, we should conduct the experiment uh, to get uh, the bidirectional bi uh, repeatability performance. 
I can see here this curve uh, uh, shows the error in uh, the forward uh, direction and the yellow line indicates uh, the error in the reverse direction when the table moves in the reverse direction and this uh, blue curve indicates the average of both error in the forward direction and error in the reverse direction. This is the average uh, value. So this is uh, the zero error uh, line and uh, different positions of uh, the axis what is the amount of error. So these uh, experiments should be conducted for all the three axes x axis, y axis and z axis and then uh, uh, we will come to know what is the repeatability of uh, the uh, stage. Now uh, there can be uh, errors, uh, the squareness error. That means you can see here we have uh, an xy table. Now, so this is the x axis uh, movement, and say so this is the y axis uh, movement. So, when the uh, table uh, moves, the top uh, surface of the table moves, whether the movement is 90 degree or not, whether it is square or not, that can be. Uh, checked uh, by using squares and uh, dial indicators and uh, at uh, proper height uh, the squareness uh, should be measured. So the squareness is basically uh, the combination of uh, rotational errors and uh, linear uh, errors. Similarly in stages there can be a bay error, you can uh, see this diagram, this is the uh, surface of the table. So small angular errors at the stage uh, surface, they produce translation errors at uh, the work piece. Let's say we have mounted uh, uh, some uh, work piece of uh, height h and then this is the work uh, piece surface. If there is small error, uh, the small angular error at the surface of uh, the table, so it gets amplified at the work uh, surface. So that is uh, the Abbe error. So this Abbe error delta x, so it is nothing but uh, the, um, the angle theta times uh, the offset uh, h, so that gives uh, the Abbe error. Now uh, how do we correct, uh, correction is given for these errors? So the different types of errors uh, should be measured and uh, stored as uh, lookup uh, table and as and when necessary we should use these uh, uh, errors, lookup table errors and then the correction should be given. So these uh, lookup table uh, values are meaningful only if uh, done at appropriate uh, abbe height. Now, uh, how do we calibrate the nano stages and uh, micro stages? So we can uh, use uh, image uh, processing the system software and we can use uh, the cameras and also we can use standard uh, specimens for calibrating uh, the nano and uh, micro stages. Also we can use uh, linear uh, interferometer for calibration purpose. Uh, this picture shows uh, the calibration uh, plate and uh, optical gratings also can be used. So the calibration plate, it has got uh, different uh, contours uh, uh, made in the plate and different uh, holes of different sizes. So these uh, uh, calibration plates uh, can be used along with uh, the laser uh, system uh, for calibrating the, to find what is the amount of error at different uh, positions. And then uh, the software uh, can be used uh, to calculate what is the amount of uh, error. Now this uh, picture shows uh, a setup, laser uh, based uh, calibration setup. You can see the surface uh, plate on which uh, the XY stage which is to be calibrated is mounted and then there is a laser source and then uh, mirrors are there for reflection of the laser source. Using uh, such a setup uh, we can uh, uh, find uh, the, we can determine the different uh, types of errors and then uh, the, we can plot the errors like this. You can see this is the 
the travel of uh, a particular axis of uh, the XYZ stage. So here it is uh, range is 0 to 285 millimeter travel and Y axis indicates the error in terms of micrometer. So when the stage moves in the forward uh, direction, uh, what is the amount of error that, uh, that is plotted here? So the maximum amount of position accuracy is uh, 8.09 micrometer. So similarly, repeatability uh, can be established. So uh, this graph shows uh, the repeatability in the forward direction is uh, 1.02 micrometer. Similarly, the pitch errors and uh, yaw errors can be determined using the, such a uh, CIS calibration system. Now, uh, this uh, table shows uh, typical specifications of uh, nano stages. So, the different uh, models uh, are available. So, this is model 1, model 2, model 3 with different uh, travel ranges. You can see in this first model, the travel range is up to 10 micrometer and the second model 25 micrometer and third model 40 up to 40 micrometer. This is the travel range of uh, the x, uh, y and z axis. So normally x axis, y axis range will be greater as compared to the z axis uh, range. So resolution is uh, 0.05 nanometer in the first uh, model, second model 0.1 nanometer and in the third model wherein uh, the travel range is more, the resolution is uh, uh, 0.15 nanometer. Also, the linearity ranges with 0.03%, 0.02%, 0.02% are available, and uh, bidirectional repeatability of 1.25 nano, 1 nanometer, 1 nanometer, and 2 nanometer are available. And pitch and yaw error uh, will be something like uh, 5 uh, micro radians, uh, 5 micro radians, and 7.5 uh, micro radians. Now here you can see some of the uh, stages, nano stage with uh, four uh, axes, that means x axis, y axis and z axis, three linear axis and then uh, fourth rotary axis is available here and this runs uh, with uh, brushless uh, DC drive and resolution of this table is 20 nanometer. Such a fine uh, uh, stages are uh, available in the market. Now this uh, shows a six axis uh, a very compact uh, parallel uh, position and that means this uh, top surface of the table always moves parallel to the uh, base and this has got uh, six degrees of freedom, three linear axis x, y, z and uh, three uh, axis pitch, uh, roll and uh, yaw. Load capacity at this particular uh, the position is 10 kg and uh, it can move at a velocity of 25 mm per uh, second. The travel range is up to 45 mm uh, linear uh, movement and uh, 25 degree rotational movement. The resolution is uh, 7 uh, nanometer. Such uh, fine accuracies or uh, positioning accuracies are possible and 300 nanometer minimum incremental motion is uh, available and repeatability is plus or minus 0 0.1 micrometer uh, and uh, if the range here uh, travel range is more a repeatability of plus or minus 2.5 micro radians is possible and standard uh, versions are also available and vacuum compatible versions are also available and DC motors are used in such uh, uh, parallel uh, positioners. Now this uh, shows uh, a stage used, micro stage used in the micro EDM uh, machine. You can see a, a fuel injector wherein uh, micro holes are uh, machined for uh, the uh, supply of uh, fuel. So you can see the micro holes. Here we can see an amplified microscopic uh, view of uh, uh, a spray nozzle of uh, diameter 100. Uh, micrometer. Now uh, in order to make uh, these fine uh, holes we have to uh, properly orient uh, the work pieces. Uh, for that apart from uh, XYZ motion of the CNC machine, the uh, should be possible to rotate the work 
piece and it should be possible to tilt uh, the table. So multiple axis uh, machining systems are uh, needed. So in order to make uh, these uh, micro holes, we have to position uh, the uh, electrode properly so that uh, these uh, micro holes are uh, uh, made. They should be possible to rotate uh, the uh, workpiece as well as uh, tilt, uh, should be possible to tilt uh, the workpiece. Now in this uh, diagram you can see uh, regular CXYZ CNC machine, 3 axis machine with uh, mounted with a trunion uh, table to provide uh, two more additional uh, axes. That means the workpiece can be rotated a rotary axis uh, as well as this uh, table can be tilted. So totally five axes are possible in this CNC machine. Uh, the different uh, sized uh, uh, CNC machines are available. Dif the uh, machine with different uh, table size, different uh, center height, different load capacities, etc., are uh, possible. Accuracy of such a system is uh, uh, rotary axis accuracy is 15 arc second, and tilt tilting the accuracy is uh, 20 arc second, and repeatability of uh, plus or minus 2 to 3 arc seconds uh, is uh, possible. Now, why normally air bearings are used in micro and uh, nano stages? You can see here, uh, if we use uh, linear motors with mechanical air bearings, the positioning accuracy is about uh, plus or minus uh, 5 uh, micrometer. If this is a uh, micro stage, specification for a micro stage. And if we use air bearings, the positioning accuracy can be uh, enhanced to up to plus minus 0.5 micrometer and bidirectional repeatability is plus or minus 0.5 if we use mechanical bearings and if we use air bearings the repeatability is plus or minus 0.2 micrometer and straightness and flatness errors also can be reduced very much in case of mechanical bearings the straightness flatness errors will be 6 to 12 micrometer whereas in air bearing uh, stages equipped with air bearings the straightness and flatness error will be as low as uh, 2 micrometer also roll error pitch error and yaw error can be reduced from uh, 10 arc second to 2 arc uh, second that's why normally air bearings are used in uh, micro stages as well as uh, nano stages now what are the different uh, applications of uh, micro and uh, nano stages. These stages are used in uh, lithography tools such as uh, optical steppers and optical uh, scanners, e-beam uh, writers, laser uh, mask uh, writers and in the metrology tools uh, such as uh, a mask, a wafer and HCD inspection systems, measurement tools, scanning electron microscopes, super resolution uh, microscopy systems. They are also used in the process equipment such as uh, probers, die bonders and uh, drilling tools uh, for making very fine uh, drills. These uh, stages are uh, used. You can see uh, the micro drills uh, in the workplace. Such uh, micro, uh, drilling is possible if we use uh, micro stages and nano stages. They are also used in uh, calibration equipment, uh, measurement and calibration of high resolution or high frequency mechanical uh, motion systems. And these stages are also used in uh, magnetic uh, levitation positioners. Now this picture shows uh, a ultra high precision positioning system with sub nanometer uh, resolution. Now how do we select uh, these uh, uh, metrology stages. Uh, the primary characteristics uh, while selecting uh, a stage are uh, linearity, sensitivity that is resolution, stability, bandwidth and cost. Uh, these uh, factors are uh, considered by selecting uh, the stages. Uh, for uh, shorter uh, travel ranges, normally Peugeot drives with uh, frictionless flexure guidance are used uh, uh, for better uh, accuracies and uh, Peugeot drives uh, 
combined with fast response, extreme uh, guide, uh, guiding precision, very long uh, maintenance free service life and uh, they can uh, be easily uh, used uh, where uh, sub nanometer step sizes are uh, uh, needed. Uh, due to high stiffness and low inertia, piezo flexor stages can uh, achieve extremely fast uh, step and uh, settle times in the millisecond or microsecond range. Piezo drives uh, have uh, high scanning uh, rates uh, with uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, hertz. Uh, this uh, high scanning rate is uh, very important in uh, optics alignment and uh, semiconductor testing and manufacture. And for uh, uh, longer uh, travel ranges, uh, positioning uh, stages with uh, frictionless uh, air bearings and linear motors are uh, used. Frictionless uh, bearings avoid the bearing rumble uh, caused by balls and rollers. Uh, to provide uh, vibration free motion and highly constant uh, velocity. Another option to go frictionless is known as uh, magnetic uh, levitation that is magnetic bearings. Uh, position feedback for closed loop control such as uh, capacitive sensor strain gauges and uh, PRS strain gauges uh, are uh, available. And, uh, uh, whenever uh, low inertia, uh, improved dynamics and uh, smaller package size and higher stiffness are required, we can uh, uh, go for micro and uh, nano stages. And also another way, important requirement uh, to use uh, these uh, stages is thermal and uh, mechanical uh, stability. Also we should look uh, for the viability of uh, uh, user friendly software to run uh, these uh, stages and uh, the stage should have uh, a low maintenance uh, requirements and the controllers and interfacing circuitry should be available and rotation requirement whether uh, rotary stages are uh, needed that also we should uh, see. Uh, with this uh, uh, we will uh, stop uh, the discussion on uh, nano and micro stages. Let us begin our uh, discussion on uh, nanotechnology instrumentation. So under this uh, topic we will be discussing about uh, the measurement instrumentation used uh, in uh, nanotechnology. So we will uh, discuss uh, about uh, the need for uh, nanotechnology and various uh, building blocks of nanotechnology and what are the various uh, measurement instrumentations used in uh, nanotechnology for measuring uh, the nano sizes and then uh, the resolution aspect of various devices and how do we select the nano instrumentation and then uh, we will uh, discuss in some detail uh, about uh, atomic uh, force uh, microscopy under this, uh, we will be discussing about uh, the probe tip used in uh, atomic force uh, microscopy and uh, working details of AFM and applications of uh, AFM. What are the various limitations and challenges of uh, AFM? And then we will move on to the discussion on uh, large area atomic force uh, microscope and then how to calibrate uh, the atomic uh, force uh, microscope. Now let us uh, discuss uh, what is the need uh, for uh, nanotechnology. Now this uh, nanotechnology is a new scientific uh, field evolving from material specific uh, individualities of uh, presently available uh, elements when uh, their sizes uh, become uh, nanometric. Uh, the nanotechnology manipulates matter at uh, atomic uh, level. Presently, the nanotechnology is uh, dealing with uh, the creation and utilization of new functional materials 
new device and systems based on innovative functions and uh, properties of nanometric sized elements and ultra small sensors communication and navigation systems with uh, very low mass low volume and low power consumption are uh, very much needed in the present day scientifically and technologically advanced uh, systems so in this aspect nanotechnology helps helps us to create uh, the uh, ultra small sensors and navigation systems now what are the building blocks of uh, nano technology you can see here we have a work piece which is the base uh, material with a very rough surface and now we want to uh, change the characteristic of uh, the surface of this uh, base material so we can always apply ultra thin uh, nano layer that is uh, uh, nanometric sized uh, layers can be applied onto the surface uh, so that the desired uh, properties of the uh, surface uh, can be achieved you can see here this uh, diagram by applying a ultra thin uh, layer on the workpiece surface the surface uh, is converted into hydrophobic uh, surface now nano structures can be built using uh, the nano technology and uh, analytical instrumentations uh, uh, can be built and used uh, for uh, uh, measuring the uh, performance of uh, nano structures and other important area in uh, nanotechnology is integration of nano materials and uh, molecular sized uh, structures now in this uh, pictures we can see uh, very small nano sized uh, uh, discs are uh, uh, made and here we can see a nano sized uh, round uh, part and here uh, uh, again a nano sized uh, cubic uh, or rectangular shaped uh, work pieces all these are uh, made using uh, the nano technology now how do we measure the nano sizes so different uh, uh, instrumentations are currently available and some of them are uh, listed uh, below uh, we can measure the nano sizes using uh, scanning uh, electron uh, microscopy or atomic uh, force microscopy optical uh, microscopes with very high resolution transmission electron uh, microscope agar electron uh, spectroscopy scanning tunneling uh, microscope x-ray photo electron uh, spectroscopy so these uh, devices uh, can be used for measurement of uh, the nano sizes of uh, the work pieces now let us try to understand the range of lateral and vertical resolutions of uh, various uh, nano instrumentation i can see here the x axis is uh, a lateral uh, resolution and y axis is uh, a vertical uh, resolution now you can see we have uh, the scanning electron uh, microscopy it has a, a very wide uh, area it is covering a very wide uh, area the lateral resolution of uh, scanning electron uh, microscopy it starts uh, from uh, uh, one uh, nanometer it goes up to few uh, uh, millimeters and uh, the vertical resolution of uh, scanning electron microscopy it starts from uh, few uh, micrometers or few nanometers up to few uh, uh, millimeter and then uh, the lateral resolution of optical uh, microscopy is uh, uh, it starts from one uh, micrometer it goes up to a few millimeters and vertical resolution it starts from uh, approximately 1 micrometer and it goes up to a few hundred uh, micrometers 
Now you can see here we have this uh, atomic uh, force uh, microscopy uh, which is having very very low uh, lateral uh, resolutions of uh, fraction of uh, nanometers to up to a uh, few uh, hundred uh, micrometers and vertical resolution of uh, AFM is uh, very very low it is uh, less than uh, nanometer fraction of uh, nanometer uh, vertical resolutions can be obtained by using uh, atomic uh, force uh, microscopy now how do we select uh, the nano uh, instrumentation now very first thing is we should understand what is the resolution uh, requirement vertical uh, resolution and uh, horizontal uh, resolution and also we should understand what is the observation uh, environment so by considering these two we can uh, select uh, the uh, nano instrument you can see here uh, atomic force uh, microscopy and stm uh, they can uh, 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 provide the uh, fractional nanometric uh, resolution so horizontal resolution is uh, less than 1 nanometer is possible and vertical resolution of 1000 of a nanometer is possible and uh, the observation environment is uh, normal uh, atmosphere it can be uh, work pieces can be measured uh, under gas vacuum liquid so at uh, different uh, observation environments we can use uh, the afm and uh, stm now if you see scanning electron uh, microscopy the resolution vertical resolution of the order of 8 nanometers and horizontal resolution of the order of 5 nanometers is possible and uh, the work pieces should be placed in a uh, vacuum so like this uh, by knowing uh, the uh, observation environment and resolution requirement we can select the appropriate uh, the instrument nano instrument now uh, here we have compared the atomic fire force microscopy with uh, SEM and uh, TEM sample preparation very little preparation is uh, required for uh, AFM when compared to SEM and TEM the fractional nanometric uh, resolution is possible in the uh, AFM and the cost uh, is relatively low and sample environment any sample environment uh, it can be in the uh, gaseous medium or liquid medium or in the normal uh, atmosphere whereas uh, when we want to use uh, some uh, vacuum is uh, required similarly for uh, measurement purpose in temp vacuum environment is uh, required only drawback of EFM is uh, the depth of field is very poor uh, and uh, the workpiece sample can be conductive or even insulating workpieces can also be measured using uh, AFM whereas in SEM and TEM the workpiece uh, should be conductive and another drawback, drawback of AFM is uh, the time of imaging or measurement time is uh, uh, it, it takes longer time when compared to SEM and uh, TEM and maximum field of view is 100 uh, micrometer whereas uh, here uh, in SEM it is a little bit uh, more maximum sample size is unlimited whereas in SEM and TEM it is uh, very much uh, limited nowadays uh, large area AFM uh, are available so that uh, any area can be uh, measured using uh, AFM and uh, the a very important benefit or advantage of uh, AFM is uh, three dimensional characteristics uh, can be obtained. It can uh, measure uh, the height information, whereas in SEM and TEM, there would be two dimensional uh, measurements. Now, uh, let us discuss uh, about uh, atomic uh, force uh, microscope in uh, some detail. Uh, this uh, atomic uh, force microscope is a a very powerful uh, surface analytical uh, technique uh, which can be used in uh, different uh, working uh, environments like air, liquid or uh, vacuum and it uh, generates a very high resolution uh, topographic uh, images of uh, the workpiece uh, surface down to atomic uh, resolution uh, depending upon the sharpness of the 
tip it gives the spatial resolutions of 1 to 20 nanometer and records uh, topographic uh, images. Uh, you can see here we have uh, the cantilever attached uh, to the basic uh, body of the atomic uh, force uh, microscope and which is having uh, a very sharp uh, tip and you can see there is a stage on which uh, the workpiece is placed the stage is uh, moved under the tip and uh, the tip uh, uh, records uh, the topographic uh, details of uh, the workpiece. The FM can also be used uh, for uh, force uh, spectroscopy that means it applies uh, force on to the workpiece surface uh, uh, varying from 5 to 50 pico newtons uh, to analyze mechanical or uh, electrical uh, uh, and chemical properties of uh, surfaces. It either drives into the surface to measure uh, nanomechanical properties such as uh, modulus, stiffness and adhesion or the tip is pulled away from the surface to investigate uh, bond rupture and molecular uh, pulling. So this uh, method of uh, uh, using the AFM is uh, known as tapping uh, mode. Now uh, the AFM basically has uh, a cantilever with its uh, tip. You can uh, see the image. This is the cantilever portion of the uh, cantilever portion and this is the tip attached uh, to the cantilever. The material of uh, cantilever and tip uh, is normally silicon, silicon nitride, metal or diamond coated levers and tips. Diamond tips are also sometimes used. Chemically functionalized uh, probe tips are also used and uh, the geometry of uh, cantilever is uh, it can be single beam uh, cantilever or uh, V-shaped uh, cantilever. That means the cantilever uh, can be of uh, this uh, shape, single beam uh, cantilever with some uh, length and uh, width and this is the uh, thickness of uh, the cantilever or it can be V-shaped. Uh, cantilever uh, like this. So at the end uh, the tip is uh, attached uh, like this. The Normally the cantilever length will be, uh, it will vary from uh, 50 to 400 uh, micrometers. And tip shape, this uh, tip shape it can be pyramidal with uh, opening angle varying from 50 degree to 35 degree and the inclination angle of tip that means the this is the cantilever the tip can be like this or sometimes tip can be like this so this is the inclination angle of uh, tip and tip position on cantilever so the position also vary it can be somewhere here or it can be at the tip uh, and then the relevant physical uh, parameters uh, such as uh, length of cantilever width of cantilever thickness of the cantilever spring constant of the material used to make uh, the cantilever resonance frequency tip radius normally it varies from 5 to 50 nanometer and tip height varies from uh, 10 to 25 uh, micrometer now you can see a scanning electron microscope uh, image of uh, AFM cantilever and uh, probe uh, tip. So this is the uh, cantilever uh, with uh, a length of about uh, 50 to 100 uh, micrometer and uh, this is uh, the probe uh, tip attached to the cantilever and you can see another uh, 
double beam type of cantilever with probe tip attached at the end of the cantilever. And uh, this has got a piezo uh, resistive uh, sensor attached uh, at other end of uh, the cantilever. Now we can see the two types of uh, cantilevers, V-shaped uh, cantilevers and uh, the tip uh, there will be probe tip and this is a single beam uh, cantilever with the tip attached at the end and these are uh, micro fabricated uh, pyramidal uh, tips of uh, the pyramid base width is about uh, 4 uh, micrometer and uh, the height of uh, the tip is about uh, uh, 6 uh, to 10 uh, micrometer. Now you can see the different uh, uh, probe tips, special uh, probe tips. So this is a probe tip with 870 nanometer tip uh, radius and here the tip radius is uh, 150 nanometer and in this case it's a very sharp uh, probe tip with 20 nanometer tip radius and here this is a thermal probe tip which senses the temperature of the workpiece surface and this is a double beam type cantilever with the tip attached at the end and this is a special probe having this is a ball a uh, probe a diameter uh, varies from uh, 10 to 30 nanometer, 40 to 60 nanometer, like this. Uh, balls uh, with different uh, diameters are uh, available. Now, uh, so these are uh, tetrahedral uh, pyramid uh, shapes. So, this is the width of uh, the cantilever, and this is the top view of the cantilever and this is the side view and the thickness of uh, the cantilever is the length and here we can see the tip attached at the end and this is uh, the close uh, view of uh, the tip of uh, uh, the uh, AFM tip, probe tip and this is the height and this is the offset from the end. Uh, what is the distance? So this is the offset with uh, uh, different uh, angular angles, 9 degree ang angle, this is 31 degree angle. Okay, and from the front view, you can see the angles 18 degree and 18 degree. The height of uh, the probe ranges uh, from 14 to 16 uh, micrometer, and tip offset ranges from 15 to 25 micrometer. And uh, these are uh, triangular uh, pyramid tips. Uh, the height range is uh, 14 to 16 uh, micrometer is the height 14 to 16 micrometer and apex angle apex uh, of one angle is uh, 11 uh, degree tip material is uh, n type antimony doped single crystal silicon material is used to fabricate these tips now let us study how uh, the afm uh, works you can see this uh, schematic diagram uh, this is the stage, scanner stage, which moves uh, in uh, x, y and uh, z uh, directions. And these uh, stages are normally piezoelectric uh, stages with nanometric resolution. And this is the cantilever with uh, tip attached to it. Now there is a laser source, which is the incident laser uh, falling on uh, the cantilever uh, surface. Uh, the a sharp uh, micro fabricated uh, tip is attached uh, to the cantilever and this is used, this uh, tip is used to scan the workpiece uh, surface. Uh, this is uh, the sample placed on uh, the scanner uh, stage. Now when the tip is moved, 
nearer to the surface uh, it uh, deflects the cantilever uh, deflects because of the force uh, developed the van der Waal uh, force uh, developed between uh, the tip and uh, the sample and this uh, deflection of the cantilever so the cantilever will uh, deflect uh, like this because of uh, the attraction or if uh, the force is uh, repulsive it will uh, move uh, back now this uh, deflection is uh, monitored using a laser and a photodiode and the uh, reflected uh, light will fall on the photodiode and uh, this will uh, generate the image of uh, topographic image of the surface now afm uh, can be uh, can image image the afm can image in a number of ways using uh, either contact mode wherein uh, the tip will be in contact with uh, the sample surface and the surface will be moved under uh, the probe or uh, the another uh, um, uh, mode is uh, oscillating uh, technique where the tip uh, taps the surface now either tip or what piece uh, table moves by using the uh, piezoelectric uh, positioning uh, systems having uh, nanometric uh, resolutions the cantilever is uh, designed with a very low spring uh, constant uh, material so that it is uh, very very sensitive to forces uh, it is uh, sensitive uh, to even uh, force as low well as uh, pico newtons the laser is focused to reflect off the cantilever and on to the sensor we can observe here the laser is falling on uh, the back surface of the cantilever uh, a mirror uh, will be placed here so that uh, the laser incident uh, ray is uh, reflected back and then it falls on uh, the photo diode the position of the beam in the sensor measures the deflection of the cantilever the position of the reflected beam of laser in the photodiode uh, measures the deflection of uh, the cantilever and then in turn the force uh, between the tip and the sample is uh, measured now you can uh, see here depending upon the uh, material combination material of tip and uh, material of uh, sample there can be repulsive uh, force or attractive uh, force and uh, even uh, the small forces as well as uh, a few micro newtons or pico newtons can be sensed and here you can see the displacement of uh, the xyz uh, scanner piezoelectric uh, scanners uh, are used uh, uh, for uh, moving uh, the workpiece under the probe afm uh, probe uh, the AFM scanners are uh, normally made of uh, piezoelectric uh, material which expands and contracts uh, proportionally to an applied uh, voltage. This uh, we discussed in detail in uh, stage position uh, metrology. We can see here uh, a piezoelectric uh, stage when voltage is applied it expands uh, or contracts depend depending upon the voltage that is uh, applied and uh, this is uh, the xyz uh, scanner on which uh, the sample is mounted and this uh, shows the uh, cantilever with uh, probe uh, distal instrument uh, scanners uh, have uh, ac voltage uh, ranges of plus 220 volts uh, to minus 220 volts in some uh, versions the piezo actuator moves the sample related to the tip that means tip will be constant it will be moving only up and down and the sample the stage on which the sample is mounted uh, will be moved using the, the piezoelectric uh, device in some other models uh, the sample is stationary while the piezo actuator moves the tip ac signals uh, are applied to conductive areas of the piezo mass uh, to create 
micro or uh, nano level movement along the x, y, z axis. Now uh, these pictures uh, show the external appearance of uh, uh, EIFM and here uh, we can see the uh, schematic diagram of uh, EIFM. So we have uh, uh, this white box is uh, the x, y, z uh, linearized visual scanner on which uh, the sample to be tested is mounted and this is uh, x, y sample translation stage. You can see two micrometers are uh, provided for uh, x moment and uh, y moment. The initial uh, adjustment of the sample, uh, initial positioning of the sample can be made using these manual uh, micrometers. And then the scanning is carried out uh, by moving, by using this XYZ linearized uh, visual scanner. And here we can see there is a column to support this uh, uh, high resolution uh, video microscope which captures the images and then all the electronic circuitry will be placed in this uh, box. Now uh, this uh, uh, schematic diagram shows the internal structure of uh, AFM. You can see the uh, this is the area where uh, the sample is mounted. This is uh, the motorized uh, x y uh, stage so here we have manual x y stage uh, for uh, initial positioning whereas here for initial positioning the motorized x y stage uh, is used and this is the surface stage surface on which the sample is uh, mounted and we can see the probe the uh, zoomed uh, view we can see here the probe uh, we can see and this is the incident laser and this is the reflected uh, laser and this uh, housing carries a laser diode and uh, the optical uh, lenses and the laser is made to fall on uh, the back surface of the cantilever and uh, the laser is uh, reflected back and this mirror which is adjustable mirror will deflect the laser and it falls on the fixed mirror and again it is uh, reflected back onto the split diode photo detector. The position of the laser on in this uh, detector uh, decides uh, the uh, uh, bending of uh, the scanner uh, cantilever. And uh, here uh, an object uh, camera objective lens is provided for viewing uh, the measurement or to capture the images. Now uh, the work stage, work phase stage of EFM is very very important. Uh, it should be free from any vibration. It should have very very uh, finer uh, linear and horizontal and vertical uh, resolutions so that uh, very fine uh, topographic uh, image uh, can be captured. The sample size normally varies uh, from 50 mm, 50 mm uh, and uh, up to 20 mm uh, thickness uh, work pieces can be mounted. Sample weight uh, can be up to 500 grams and x y stage uh, travel is 20 mm by 20 mm. So for initial adjustments this x y stage man it can be manual or motorized and uh, also the cantilever is moved up and down for initial adjustment for which there is a z uh, stage and focusing stage travel is uh, up to 15 uh, millimeter. Accurate XY scanning is to be carried out for that uh, closed loop XYZ uh, flexor scanners are provided and uh, the flat and orthogonal XY scanning is uh, very very essential. The out of plane uh, motion of uh, the uh, XY stage should be less than uh, 1 uh, nanometer over uh, the total scan range. The jet scanner linearity error is uh, uh, less than 0.015% of the overall uh, uh, scanning range. Accurate height uh, measurements without any software is possible in some uh, EFMs. Accurate topography with uh, low noise uh, as low as 0.05 to 0.07 nanometer uh, jet uh, detectors are used for topographic uh, uh, sensing. 
Now let us uh, move to the applications of uh, atomic force uh, microscope. There are uh, many biological applications of uh, AFM. The AFM is used uh, for getting the images of uh, biological uh, samples. We can uh, see here an image of uh, human uh, chromosome obtained from uh, AFM. So many microbiological applications uh, AFM uh, can be used. And when we use some uh, personal uh, care uh, products like gels, oils, paste, there will be changes in the hair, teeth and skin in the nano uh, scale uh, level. So what is the amount of uh, change in these uh, uh, things, in these items at nano scale? For measurement of that we can use uh, AFM and uh, you can see here uh, sometimes uh, the nanoparticle coating will be there on some surfaces and we need to uh, remove the nanoparticles from the surface. Then uh, to study what is the amount of force required to remove uh, nanoparticles we can use uh, AFM and for topographical studies of surfaces and uh, to get uh, the nano mechanical properties of uh, coatings we can uh, use uh, AFM. Now uh, normal uh, uh, AFM resolutions will be like this. If the movement of uh, XY stage is uh, something like 100 uh, micrometer or 200 micrometer then uh, the resolution uh, of x axis and y axis will be 1 uh, nanometer whereas uh, the vertical resolution will be 0 0.1 nanometer and if the scanning uh, range is uh, limited to say 50 micrometer and 50 micrometer in such cases uh, AFMs uh, are available with the ultra fine uh, resolution that is resolution as low as 0 0.003 nanometer and if uh, the z-axis moment is limited to 15 uh, micrometer then uh, a resolution of 0 0.001 nanometer is uh, possible and these uh, AFMs can be used uh, for uh, uh, studying the sub uh, unstrom uh, deflection of cantilevers and they can be used uh, for measurement of very small forces in the pico uh, newton level. Now with this uh, we will uh, conclude uh, the module 12 lecture number 6. In this lecture we discussed uh, the following uh, topics. We studied about uh, the micro nano stage errors, errors in linear errors as well as angular errors in micro stages and nano stages and how do we calibrate uh, the micro and uh, nano uh, stages, uh, what are the facilities uh, available like interferometry, laser based systems and what are the typical uh, specifications of micro and nano stages. Also we discussed about uh, the various applications and uh, selection of uh, stages. Then we uh, discussed uh, on uh, nanotechnology instrumentation, uh, we discussed uh, the need for nanotechnology and what are the various building blocks of uh, nanotechnology and then nanotechnological metrological instrumentation and uh, we also discussed about resolution and how to select uh, nano metrological instrumentation. Then we also discussed uh, in some length uh, about the atomic uh, force uh, microscopy in which we discussed about uh, cantilever and uh, probe tips uh, used in AFM, how the AFM uh, works and uh, the uh, stage uh, details of AFM and some applications of uh, AFM. With this we will uh, conclude uh, this lecture. We will continue, continue the discussion in the uh, next lecture on uh, atomic uh, force uh, microscopy. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.